Hi, I'm Iran. I'm going to talk about going from CI to AI, or how do we add an AI layer to our software organization? In the coming decade, all software is going to be generated with the assistance of AI. Either the code is going to be generated using AI, or it is going to be tested with the help of AI, reviewed using AI, or even deployed with the help of AI. So if you're an engineer or engineering manager, it is safe to assume that there is an AI in your future. And this is due to several factors. First, we're all facing the challenge of having to ship software with limited resources. We cannot hire all the engineers that we would like to hire. And even when we can hire them, hiring and onboarding them are so expensive. So we need to find other ways to move faster with the resources that we already have. Fortunately, there is an opportunity for automation here. As engineers, we know that at least part of our tasks are repetitive and can be at least partially automated. And in fact, code itself is highly repetitive and common, which is what makes uh, things like Stack Overflow so effective. Finally, in recent years, we have seen the rise of very powerful ML models that train on massive amounts of data and can be used to generate text and images. In fact, uh, the images in my presentation so far, including this one, this slide, have been automatically generated <coughs> from the prompts that are shown at the bottom of each image. So when you take these powerful ML models and use them to train over um, code obtained from repositories, open source repositories with permissive licenses and code from your own repositories, AI is starting to change how we do software development. In the past decades, organizations realized that having a solid source control and CI CD pipeline is essential for shipping high quality software. And they've built these nice pipelines going from code all the way to the deployment. And as you go through this pipeline, you're accumulating a lot of information in your system of records. So first of all, um, you have the code, the code base, and the code base contains code that hopefully has been tested and reviewed. So it contains a lot of the patterns and best practices of how code should be written inside the organization. You also have test cases that uh, historically ran on various versions of the code and either broke or passed successfully. So you get a lot of rich information from these past executions of tests. You also get past code reviews and what happened with them, uh, what comments were made on what piece of code, et cetera, et cetera, and also deployment logs. So you have all this rich information that is going to your system, starting with the source control and going to other artifacts. And now it is time to really reap the benefits of having all that information and learn from it in order to accelerate all stages of the software development lifecycle. And you can think of that as having another layer in your system, an AI layer that is learning from your system of record, learning from all the data that you've accumulated throughout the stages of the software development lifecycle in order to accelerate all the stages of the lifecycle uh, moving forward. I'd like to make that slightly more concrete by showing an end year vision for doubling the productivity of teams. So there are a lot of kind of points in the in this space. I'm not going to describe all of them. Uh, generally speaking, the green ones are points that we are either working on or others are working on and we think are attainable within the next 12 to 18 months. The purple ones are a little bit further down the road, although if they're mentioned here, at least some research has been done on them and some results have been published and I'm happy uh, to kind of answer questions about those offline. But I'd like to at least describe some of the green points here on this slide in, in more detail to make it more concrete. <clears throat> so during the code phase, clearly we can do code generation for developers based on code that we have learned from either uh, permissive open source repositories all from code inside your organization. So basically the idea here is to learn from past code in order to generate new code for you contextually. We can also train on private repositories, either all the repositories in your organization or a subset of them to better capture patterns that are unique to your organization 
or to a particular project you're working on. Uh, importantly, one of the features that our users are always asking for is a way to capture beyond what the AI has learned from the code base, a way to capture what the experts in the organization know and teach the model how to propagate this kind of expert knowledge to the entire team. And, and the idea here is to use AI with some human guidance to propagate expert knowledge to the entire team, making them aware of kind of expert guidance as they are generating uh, new code. There are other things that are relatively close by like automatic refactoring, even when the code has been written already, uh, the AI can recommend how to improve that by refactoring it automatically and some work on code reading navigation. I'd like to skip ahead a bit and talk about uh, test generation, which I think is a really compelling and uh, very close um, use case. In test generation, uh, the idea is to learn from both the code, uh, the code base in the project, the actual functional code, and from previous tests in order to generate um, new unit tests or uh, larger tests, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another one I'd like to mention during the review phase is AI code review, which can be done either in the pull request merge request or actually loop back all the way and show the results of code review in real time in, in the IDE. And again, the idea here is to learn from past defects or past reviews in order to predict reviews automatically without human involvement. And there are other things here that I will uh, notice. Um, so even if we take, take a step back, um, there has been a lot of investment in the delivery part of the pipeline over the years. Like there, there's been a lot of work on how do we bring the solution faster to customers? Like how do we um, accelerate testing, accelerate the process of review, accelerate the process of deployment. And these have seen uh, a nice amount of automation without involvement of AI. So there's been a lot of improvement to these processes even before AI is arriving to the scene. In contrast, on the part of writing the code itself, which is where we as engineers solve the actual customer problems, there have not been much innovation um, actually in the last 30 years or so since the introduction of IntelliSense. So if you trace it back to its sources, it's actually more than 30 years probably. And this, this part of the process of writing code is actually the highest value add, but until AI, we, we had no way to tackle it. There was no kind of easy innovation on how to transform, how to accelerate the process of writing code. And I'd like to kind of drill down on that piece a little bit. So what, what we've been doing uh, in the past few years is using generative AI models, um, notably large language models trained on millions of projects with permissive open source licenses to predict code. And this works in all IDEs and so all no common IDEs and for all languages. And it typically automates up to 30% of the code uh, for our users. And it makes developers better and happier, uh, makes them better because it suggests things that are like kind of the common patterns and therefore prevents error and keeps them in the flow. They don't have to context switch to look for solutions on Stack Overflow or elsewhere. And it makes them happier because it automates the mundane parts of the work. It automates exactly the parts of the work that we don't really enjoy and frees the developers to do the more creative and the, the work that actually solves the, the problems and not, not the, boiler, the boilerplate. And finally, uh, what Top9 is doing is safe and secure. You can run it anywhere and you can also run it in your own private cloud if you're under some compliance restrictions. And I'd like to maybe concretize that even further by showing a quick demo. So I'm going to switch to my ID here. And this is a VS Code with the Tab9 extension installed. And you can look at it on Tab9. Just search for it and see that it's installed. All right, and you can see Tab9, and it's quite popular. 
and you can just install it yourself the same way. Let me close this. And I dropped here into some Java code uh, using Kafka. And it is creating a consumer. And what I'd like to do here is I'd like to iterate over all the records that are coming from the consumer and print them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell Tab9 that this is what I would like uh, the code to do. I want to iterate over uh, all records um, and print them. And at this point, what Tab9 does, it contextualizes on everything that is happening in the editor here and the gray uh, piece of code that has been uh, automatically generated here has been automatically generated by Tab9 in real time based on all the context in my project and on the context in the current file, including both code and the, nat the natural language hint that I gave it. And I can just hit Tab to accept this suggestion, which now comes, becomes part of my code. You can see that it uses you know, the run consumer that has been defined here and it correctly uh, does the polling with some duration of one second, et cetera, et cetera, and even increments the total count counter that should have been incremented in, in the context of this problem. To summarize, AI assistance makes your team better by using AI models. Um, you get your team aligned, you get more consistent code, faster development by automating the mundane parts, fewer errors by everyone consuming the same best practices and known patterns, which also leads to more efficient code review. And obviously, uh, to faster onboarding because even new developers get suggestions based on what has been learned from the code base. And I'll stop here. Thank you very much for your attention.